Hey there, I'm Lucas and as I said in my last video, the future looks bright and indeed it is bright. Today I want to have a look at not one but two rather new uh, monitors from Fotka, the E50 as well as the C50. So first things first, I figure out the most interesting part for you guys is the actual brightness of these monitors. Right now both are only set at 300 nits. But as you can see, we can easily switch them to their high brightness models. On the right side here, you can see the C50, which has a maximum brightness of 2000 nits. And as on the right side, we have the E50 with a maximum brightness of 2500 nits. As you can already tell here, the difference of 500 nits is not the biggest one in real life. But let's have a look at the measured data. Both feature some presets, but let's concentrate on the usual D65 wide point as well as the adjustable user mode. The E50 ranges a bit low when set to D65, only around 5300 Kelvin. Also, while we get quite a bit of light already, we are around 300 nits short of its advertised value. The switch to user mode without adjusting any setting changes things tremendously though. Not only do we land very very close to the 6500 Kelvin, the light output is even larger than advertised and reaches over 3100 nits. The C50 set to 6500K is much closer to its dedicated target, but not quite there, also around 200 nits less than what's on the box. Switching to user mode, we get a little bit colder on the white point, but just as with the E50, the brightness is much higher than anticipated, at over 2400 nits. With some adjustments, we should be able to land on D65 quite well, sacrificing a bit of the gain brightness in the process. For both monitors, the performance is very fair and even brighter than we thought. Huh, you gotta love these kind of surprises. So what I wanted was record some footage outside in broad daylight to show you how well this display is readable in broad daylight. The issue is right now it's winter and also there's a lockdown going on. So I'm not gonna do that. But to give you a general idea, my friend Daniel shot these two photos with a cell phone in broad daylight, high noon, so to say, last summer. So you can get an impression of uh, this monitor, especially compared to the inbuilt camera display. It's really well readable outside in, I guess, any lighting condition. One of my biggest concerns with high brightness monitors was always uh, the battery drain. So I hooked up my old trusty NPF 750 batteries with a capacity of 5000 mAh and checked for the endurance. So a fully charged of these batteries will last you around 125 minutes on uh, 2500 nits on the E50 monitor. At full 2000 nits, the C50 topped out at around 240 minutes. And at 1000 nits, both monitors ran about 165 minutes. That's some pretty good battery life. Function-wise, not much has changed since the A50 series. So let's go through this real quick. We still have the waveform in RGB, YUV and luminance only. We have a vector scope. We have peaking, zebra, adjustable, false color and two different variations. We have some kick-ass anamorphic modes in 1.25, 1.33, 1 1.5, as well as 2X and my personal favorite 2x Mac which crops into the image and gets rid of the black sides. We can still pinch to zoom on the touch screen and of course all the other small things like one-to-one -one pixel preview, frame guides, audio meters etc etc. And of course we still have the LUT preview and as before we can load our own LUTs by putting them on a flash drive in that cube format and loading them into the monitor. As before on the A50 we have seven buttons, real tactile buttons that we can assign uh, in the monitor to our liking. On the E50, you can swipe from the top and then set the different buttons. Unfortunately, on the C50, this doesn't work, but you still can do it inside a menu. Actually, this menu from swiping down is one of my new favorite things because down here you have little um, icons where you can set different uh, functions. For example, I can enable and disable the LUT here. I can enable false color. And one of my favorites, um, broad overview with all my scopes. So I have a vector scope, waveform, histogram and audio meters all in one view together with uh, the camera image. As I already anticipate this question, no, 
there is no cross conversion from HDMI to SDI or vice versa. In the past with reviews I liked to test the latency of the monitor by comparing the internal LCD versus the external monitor. However what I noticed is that I mainly test the delay of the HDMI output because usually these monitors don't have any delay. It's the camera that does. So when you simply hook it up to a computer and move with the mouse a bit you can directly see that there is simply no latency. Talking about latency, both of these monitors feature an HDMI and SDI loop throw. No cross conversion, but you can uh, send out the HDMI signal um, over to another device. And this is why uh, how I'm feeding the C50 here right now actually. As you can see, this loop through also has virtually no latency. So totally usable to run another monitor or EVF on set. Let's talk real quick what's in the box. Obviously we have the monitor, we have a sunshade, which also protects the monitor when in the back. We have an HDMI cable, a short and small SDIH cable, very nice, a little DC cable. We have a few of these inserts that I really love, 3 8 inch to M6 as well as quarter inch. We again have this little screwdriver, a little cold shoe with quarter inch screw to be mounted, including an Allen key, a microfiber cloth, this little coin thingy that you could put on your keychain, which is great for screwing down tripod plates or the little inserts. And of course, the little foot with an Ari rosette with which you can put it on any cold or hot shoe. As an optional purchase, we have this half gated uh, foldable sun hood, as well as a tempered glass screen and a frame to keep it in place. What I wouldn't have thought is that even with this glass screen attached, I can still use the touch screen. And also, it's really really stable. I actually already dropped this one two times on my hardwood floors and it obviously didn't break, not even in a little crack. So cool thing, I'm a fan. Now let's also have a quick look at the housing. On the left and on the right we have two quarter inch threads as well as one 3 8 inch in the center of an Ari rosette. Um, here we can use the inserts to make it M6 or a quarter inch. On the bottom of the monitor we also have a rosette. Next to it we have the HDMI output. On the top we have the seven buttons as well as the on and off switch plus a little wheel to control the monitor if you don't want to use the touchscreen. On the back we have the SDI in as well as the SDI out protected by these little rubber caps that can't come off. We have two ports for NPF batteries, a DC input and the DC output, a headphone jack for monitoring, an HDMI in and a USB port for applying firmware updates and loading LUTs. On the rear you can also see the visual difference between the C50 and E50 monitors, which is the cooling unit, including a little fan on the rear of the E50. So this will handle the heat a lot better. The DC out on the rear is not really good for running your camera as you always need two batteries installed to be able to run it, but it is pretty cool to run um, a Nucleus Nano for example. Now let's have a deeper look at the difference between the C50 and the E50 monitors. So you already saw the fan unit on the rear of the E50. Actually the C50 looks more or less identical to the older A50 aside from the little rubber caps on the SCI ports and the bezels around the display. The other differences are in the menus or in the functionality of these two monitors. You already saw that the E50 can assign the buttons uh, quickly over the quick menu while the C50 can't do that. Another feature that only the C50 has is the so-called auto-rotate. So basically when I rotate the display like a phone it will also rotate the image. And then there are some oddities between these two monitors. For example, in the major overview, you can already see it, that the vector scope on both monitors looks differently. And also the audio meters in any mode uh, look differently on both monitors. This is a bit strange. I don't know why this is. I mean, there's for me no practical reason why it is, but it, it's there. And uh, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's weird. Nothing is ever perfect, so let's have a look at what is not so cool. First, let's talk about the wheel, which you use when you uh, don't want to use the touchscreen. Sometimes um, this wheel behaves a bit strange, so um, usually it's fine, but sometimes it's, it skips a beat or doesn't react, as you can see here. Uh, it's it's mild annoyances. I don't think it's a deal breaker, in my opinion at least. Along the same lines, the touchscreen sometimes uh, works a bit weird. I mean, right now I'm using this monitor from the side, so uh, probably I'm not hitting the, the uh, icons here correctly. Usually a mild annoyance. It's nothing deal breaking, but it's there and it's fair to address it. Another issue 
That's where I'm wrong though. In this part of the review, I had a little rant about legal and full range and how lots of monitors, including the Atomos Shinobi, can cut off your signal. However, while I was shooting more B-roll on the matter, I noticed that I made a little mistake in my initial examination and that these monitors don't have any issues displaying full range signals. To shed a bit more light on the issue and a possible workaround I found, I will make another video on the matter. So stay tuned for that. Long story short, full range signals on many field monitors can lead to clamp signals, but not on these. As you saw, on the E50 we have a fan. Right now it's on 50% and if you get it on it close, you can hear it, right? So it's, it's there. If I set it to 100%, it's audible for me as well, like in the room. At 50% at this distance it's not audible, at 100 it's definitely audible. And um, you can also set it entirely off. So the E50 in general has a much larger cooling element, so you might get by with um, setting it off, but, but I would keep it at, at least 50%. It's not really audible and you're a bit safer on the overheating side. Which one uh, would I recommend? Basically both are fantastic monitors. Um, the little quirks and the little oddities and the differences I don't really care about them, especially around the features. Um, not, nothing of that is a deal breaker. The E50 is a bit brighter, which is always nice to have, and uh, it has the larger cooling element, so it will last longer um, on a very hot summer day or on a heated set. If you don't really care about the heat, of course, if you live in an area which is not super hot during the summer or you don't shoot during the summer, the C50 will serve you just fine, I think. So really, both are fantastic choices. But if I had to pick, I'd pick the E50. So then thank you so much for watching uh, and sitting through this probably very long review about the new Fotker monitors. So yeah, till next time.